Welcome to the American Intelligence Medium. I'm your host, Douglas Gabriel, and today I'm with my good friend, Michael McKibben. Hello there. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming up to the studio. Sure. I want to ask you, the guy who probably knows more about the internet because you helped create the scalable part that we call social networking, which was then taken by so many other companies and then turned into mega billionaire uh, tech lord monopolies. Uh, we want to talk first about the internet. There are so many crazy, confusing thoughts about the internet. I'm going to throw out the first one. You ask anybody, who owns the internet? They laugh. Oh, no one owns the internet. <laughs> the internet exists on all of the computers that are connected to it. And that's why it's so powerful and it's so magnificent. And anyone who has a computer that can connect it, that is the internet. That's how silly people are, Michael. I know mm -hmm. you as an inventor, especially with the amazing things that you brought us into this new world of social networking by them stealing your copyrights and other things, your trade secrets. But what do you think about this myth that nobody owns the internet and that net neutrality means that everybody has a complete chance to get information pure and free like it was supposed to be created in the internet. It was supposed to free all of us all this information. Well, the, it, those are essentially propaganda impressions. I mean, the fact is uh, the internet's wires and computers and they're all hooked together and, and they have software that makes them work. So it's all very explainable. And uh, primarily it's the domain of the um, telephone companies that provide those services to us, both wired and wireless and satellite. And so the satellite gets into the U.S. government and the military, uh, but basically it's all run by AT&T, always has been. Boy, now there's magic running somewhere in those wires, isn't there? Because they say, you know, look at the amazing things that the internet can do. You can go on the internet and you can go to cloud computing where you put your information somewhere. You don't know where it is, but it's being taken care of there. <laughs> Where is it being taken care of then, Michael? Well, cloud, cloud computing really emerged what, in the last five or six years. And it's basically uh, a different way of describing mainframe computers. In the old days, when you had a mainframe computer, you had terminals hooked to it, and they all talked to the mainframe. And then we had client server, which, which uh, made smaller networks that then hooked to the bigger networks. And then this idea of cloud computing is, is essentially a marketing branding. Uh, description for how, how we, with an individual PC, connect to a larger computer. And of course, I'm being somewhat facetious, as you I, can I, tell. I couldn't tell at all. You couldn't tell at all, because <laughs> of my extreme <laughs> sincerity. Uh, because, let's see, hmm, where does the CIA keep their cloud computing? Oh, that would be Amazon. That would be Jeff Bezos. <gasps> yeah, where does the NSA sometimes borrow to keep their cloud computing and all some of theirs before the Utah uh, Center went in? Oh, that would be, that's right, uh, Facebook. Uh, where is it? Are you, so you notice that it's not in the clouds. It's being held by right. the military. <laughs> Your information in is large. being held by the military. They don't only surveil you. System. They own it. And not right. long ago, you just did an expose on what was it, Verizon and Sprint, showing that they have a 345-page end-user agreement that says they own your voicemail forever. They own right. everything you ever do. If you go onto their system, they own it all. And you, we thought, okay, the NSA, that's a myth that they would, in fact, surveil everyone in America on your phone and on your computer. And so you, you think, you know, oh, I'll just go on with my business. No, it's much worse than that. Cor these corporations own you. They're trying to market you. They're using subliminal control through these devices to market you to buy their products. Well, the, in the last 20 years, what we've seen is an incremental give up of our rights. And, and so it was all a little bit at a time. And in the next phase, we accepted that. And then they did a little bit more. We accepted that. And then they started including these end user license agreements, which are essentially licensed to steal everything we've got. And nobody complained and nobody held them accountable and nobody sued them from the Department of Justice. And so now we've gotten to the point where they just openly issue these thousand page uh, user license agreements that it essentially say in the first paragraph everything you own is yours second paragraph says when you use our system you give it all to us like samsung and sony you pointed out the little cameras on those tv they are 
recording it all the time and keeping it. So if you're walking around in your skivvies, you better be careful because well, I mean, they have all that. Their license and they actually it. says that as soon as you turn your, your uh, TV on, we get to use all the data that comes through your TV. That was my very point. That's when you agreed to it, folks, when you turned on the device. Right. <laughs> so don't think you're getting away from anything. So if you don't believe in Vault 7 or William Binney or the Snowden whistleblowers and all these things. Well, and those were 1,000-page agreements. If you start clicking through the levels of their web agreements, you get into the thousands of pages of legalese that you agree to. And essentially, you're giving up your constitutional rights to privacy and property, both. And you would think you'd be protected by the United States government from this, but you aren't because of the National Defense Authorization Act and the Board of Broadcasting Governors, and now what we call the Ministry of Truth or the Global Engagement Center. They use Facebook to be able to go and do inquiries on anyone they want. And so when they try to tell you they can't stop terrorists, they can't get them off the net, but we know that they do that in Turkey. They've done it in Iran. They've done it in China. They've done it in India. They've done it everywhere but America because Americans want to say there's net neutrality and that the ICANN numbers have gone to somewhere in the United Nations. I don't even know who is in control of that. It used to be America. Well, the, the, all, of those, all of those explanations are nonsensical. It's as easy as flipping the switch on your, on your light in this room. They can turn it off if they want to. They don't want to, obviously. And that's the myth that Russia is going to now have their own internet that is completely separate as you explained to me before we got on air was that uh that just means they're going to control their domain so we can't basically abuse them right. <laughs> which would be a very smart thing to do because as you pointed out let's let's go back to the beginning and i'll stop being facetious in some of my remarks because this is a very dead serious topic the internet was created and used it was created by the military in different univer in universities doing studies for the military so it was called arpanet and it was a project from DARPA, which you've heard us refer to again and again. It was run on AT&T's lines. Mm -hmm. Half or more <clears throat> of all of AT&T's lines were paid for by U.S. taxpayers. Who owns the Internet? You paid for it. Right. It was a military project. Exactly. And then tell them about Cisco and the routers. Well, I mean, C Cisco was essentially a, a government operation to build the, uh, the switching connections for all of the network connections that uh, enabled all the packets of information that flow through the Internet to be routed from one location to another. And uh, essentially, the government didn't want competing <coughs> systems out there, so they basically drove the other providers out of business so that Cisco was the only one left. When I was in the NSA, I was very curious about the building that was right next to the Pentagon. That was the Cisco building. Oh, yeah? So everything going in and out of the Pentagon and every piece of information coming in through the United Press International, Reuters, or the AP all got scrubbed in their Cisco centers. Because why? As they said a few years ago, uh, I forget how many years ago, I think it was in um, 2000. Five, perhaps, they were putting out commercials that said, virtually every single internet communication goes across Cisco routers. And then right after that, there was a battle between the CIA and the NSA, and Obama let Cisco lose hundreds of billions of dollars because they did a sting, which was a false sting, showing that they were putting back doors into all the Cisco routers that were leaving the country. Complete nonsense. They had put backdoors in every router in this country, out of this country, always. That's what Cisco was built for. It's another fake dummy company, very much like Facebook or Twitter or some of these other ones, which are all built from the inside out from InQtel, Highlands Forum, DARPA, so on and so forth. Well, there's not only backdoors in the routers. There's backdoors in the computers that the routers hook to. On the hardware, on the software, there's a backdoor key in anything that's exported. And we did that on purpose. Why did we do that? You can tell them the story, which when you told me this story, and I read it uh, upon the Americans for Innovation timeline, I was completely blown away. I, I still, to this day, uh, reel back in shock at the magnitude of the impunity of the tech cartel. In 1993, when they were dealing with, okay, how do we keep these things secure? 
And they said, okay, IBM wants to send computers to our enemies in foreign countries. What did they say? Well, how are you going to put in a back door? And so the tech cartel got together. Why don't you tell right. us about that? Well, th this information came out of a Hillary email that Judicial Watch chipped out of the uh, State Department. And it disclosed a meeting that occurred in about June of 1993, where the Carnegie Institute for World Peace sponsored a program, which I now know uh, was sponsored by my patent attorney, uh, James Chandler. And it was a specifically for giving the FBI a backdoor key to all software, hardware, and firmware that uh, was going to be used to run the internet. And this was a three-page list of who's who in America in technology, in media, in uh, banking, in education, in intelligence, in law enforcement, you name it, all, they were all at this meeting, including NPR, um, uh, CBS, NBC, New York Times, uh, you name it. They were all there, and it was being sponsored by the Clinton administration, obviously. And uh, you guess who their first speaker was? John Podesta. You're right. <laughs> I was going to say, when you told me he was in that group, I almost passed out. I right. had no idea his power and control was that deep. And really, I would say that evil. Because let's, re let's, let's name some of them. One of my favorite people, completely the most earnest and upright lawyer in Washington, D.C., Robert Mueller. Oh, no, that's wrong. The guy who covered up he 911. He was a U.S. attorney then. And oh, then, yeah, he uh, was Co there. Comey was around. Oh, uh, James Comey, the upright Rosenstein, man. Rosenstein. Oh, Rod Rosenstein, uh, what a surprise. Who's the... Uh, who's this the... criminal cartel has these wonderful people in it? How about Stephen Crocker? Yes, yeah, Stephen Crocker was in the meeting. Tell what he did. He's he's an interesting character. Crocker, I know nothing about him. During Obama's about him. administration, Crocker uh, ran ICANN, which was the internet naming business that all of our domains use to register a domain name with a domain number so that your your traffic can be routed through the internet. He was the guy who handed over uh, the uh, ICANN to the UN right before Obama left office. Hillary Clinton? You think she was in the background in this meeting in 1993 when basically the determination of counterintelligence in relationship to security, in relationship to computers, and the what was to then become the worldwide internet. Do you think she was there, Hillary? Uh, she wasn't on the list, but uh, she could have been. Patent attorney? Patent attorney? She was certainly in, in, in the loop. Uh, our patent attorney, who was but your advisor. But she's a patent attorney. You kind of, um, well, yeah, yeah, you, you kind of didn't know that. Uh, anything, I, I can't help but think that Hillary would be the bills there. Okay, well, see, here's what happened after the bill's there, Hillary's got to be there because, After know, that meeting, the head Behind every meeting, evil man is an evil or woman. And they... they they kind of decided they wanted to do this, but they couldn't get Congress to go along with it. So Congress never agreed to this. So oh, what did they do? They a decided secret deal? They, they decided to um, uh, create an export law, which would require the backdoor key in all software, hardware, and firmware if it was being made for export. So think about it. Everything in America was being made for exports. So in fact, they got what they wanted without any regulation. At we all. have transnational companies all throughout America. We have Russians, we have Chinese, we have everyone working here. So anyone really who's on the internet is international. Right. In fact, some signals are broken up mm -hmm. and sent to foreign countries before they go down the street to get recombined again in the message. So you can basically say that anyone on the internet is going across state lines and national lines. So here we have FBI. Why the FBI, not the CIA? In this case, because it was counterintelligence at that point. At that point, counterintelligence was ran through an office of the FBI. Now it's ran through, uh, after uh, 911, it's run through the uh, Counterterrorism Center. So what you have here is counterintelligence. In other words, nothing but lies, nothing but espionage, nothing but cheating, nothing but going against all treaties, the Geneva Convention, everything else, the US Constitution, the US Bill of Rights, and this same cartel of people involved in the Clinton Foundation scam, one after the next, the Uranium One scam. You know, you can go online right now to the National Institute of Standards and Technology and see the list of companies who have embedded the backdoor keys in all their products. And Cisco's got several hundred listed. If I'm not uh, mistaken, and certainly I am often, uh, 
the Geneva Convention states you can't spy in a country that you're not at war with. So when uh, baby Bush declared war on terrorism, and terrorism is undefined, and then Obama allowed that term to be used on all Americans, every American is a terrorist until proven otherwise. You can have an offshore account that is uh, supporting a Hezbollah. They don't know until they check. So they can actually seize, and I've had people who had their entire companies, all their property seized, with an accusation that they had an offshore account that was feeding a terrorist group, and they never even finished in court. They basically seized everything. They still have it. This is the, the new thing Jeff Sessions made even wider. They can accuse you of being a terrorist because you know somebody whose name is Muhammad, mm -hmm. and they can take everything you own because of the U.S. Patriot Act. Who enforced that? Robert Mueller, the same person that was in this cartel in 1993. Well, unfortunately, we the people expect our law enforcement organizations to protect us from this kind of nonsense. And when our law enforcement is, in fact, the people perpetrating it, we obviously we don't have any protections at all. And and that's that's an unfortunate state of things. And so now I think it's it's up to we the people to get up to speed on this stuff and and uh, take back our country. Exactly. And with what Leader Technologies is trying to do, if you could get your Miller plan put into place, you can skip over the Congress, you can skip over the crooked court system, and you can have the president pay you for what was stolen from you. It would be nothing more than saying, I recognize you to have a license to have done this. Here's the $3 trillion that was made off of your license. Let's see if we can't do a deal. And you have a beautiful deal, win, win, win for everyone, including the government, the taxpayers, and the people who knowingly ripped off technology through a very corrupt patent system. And so what we have as the internet, what is the internet? Who owned the patents that created all the routers at first? One company. Who owned the internet wires? One company, which at that time was called, uh, well, early before that it was called Ma Bell. It was a monopoly allowed by the United States government. It was created and allowed and funded, and more than half of the money that they've ever spent was our money, folks. And right now, last year, $3 billion paid to Verizon to extend broadband into places in America where people don't even want broadband, mm -hmm. and to build cell towers. And who makes money off these cell towers? Foreign companies make money off of every wireless broadband microwave cell tower that's, in fact, attacking your body with electromagnetic microwave transmissions all, at all times. So who is it who owns the uranium in America? That would be the Russians. Who owns the purification of uranium in America? That would be the British, the French, and the Dutch. Who own, I, I can go down the list of who owns what, but it's not Americans. And so here's the deal. It used to be one guy who assigned the ICANN numbers. One guy. One guy controlled the internet. It is a lie that anyone but America has ever owned the internet. And we should take it back as a public utility if we want to, or at least work it so that the corporations that do it do not surveil people, do not attack them, do not attack their freedoms, do not steal their privacy, do not go against the Bill of Rights. We can do this, folks, but there's these myths that go on. Let me bust one more myth with the World Wide Web. What's his name, Sir Berners-Lee? Tim Berners-Lee. Tim Berners-Lee at CERN, a guy who's supposed to be doing particle physics, one day decided to create the magical identification numbers, which Michael can explain to us, that created the ability for us common people to get onto the World Wide Web, which was before always, always a military project. But when they wanted to make it weaponized against people so that the NSA, the CIA could do psyops, they had to come up with some brilliant genius who in CERN, and I'm sorry to have to tell you that $5 trillion toy that they built there isn't even there. No one can show you pictures of the large collider. They can only show you pictures of the small collider. It is a scam. It is the collection center for the CIA, the rogue CIA in Europe where they work with the bankers. And that's where the international bankers work because the rogue yeah. CIA controls hmm. the gold stolen after World War II. And so they move it around between CIA banks and between the Bank of International Settlement. And that, remember, Bank of International Settlement was to do what? Take the gold that was being held of the Germans and the gold stolen from the Germans and the gold stolen from the Jews who were put into concentration camps and hold it in one bank that never wanted to give it back. A lot of that gold is still there and they won't give it back to the owners. That's who the BIS is. They control 
clearing every single derivative swap that's international. All derivative swaps are basically uh, economic terrorism. They shouldn't be allowed. It's nothing but betting. And the BIS backs that up with gold. Well, there at CERN, the World Wide Web came to birth. It takes my breath away thinking of Sir Timbo, who just one day in his off time in between deciding where antimatter and dark matter and um, antiprotons really exist in an atom, he decided to magically take this huge step that made everybody freely from a different country, Switzerland, come into the internet that doesn't really have any wires. It doesn't have, no one owns it. There's no one controls the, it. The but now we all get to go to it for free. I feel liberated. Don't you feel liberated? These mythologies have been created around every piece of this yes. story from the mythologies. Beginning. Yes. These are modern digital mythologies that are right. such nonsense that if you look into them, it, it will just make you want to vomit because they aren't even creative with these mythologies. They couldn't have picked a worse student at Harvard to, to say created the social network invention of our time. Dude Zuckerberg was a failure. He was sued by everyone involved in it and has lost most of those cases. And yet he is one of the richest men in the world and wants to run for president. I always make the joke, I've never seen him at work. When did this man who basically changed our world, uh, he doesn't even work anymore. He says he doesn't write code. He's well, not interested I in mean, it. That, that's another mythology. I mean, oh, that mythology was created right. by the social networking movie and a book called <laughs> The Facebook Effect. So yeah. it, it was pretty easy for them to actually create this mythology. And uh, they want we, to were, we, were, we were beginning to uh, look at that. What are they doing with our technology? And and then the, this movie came out, and it was a big lie. And then this book came out, and it was a big lie. And all those guys made a lot of money, and they just carried it right down through the IPO. Bezos, Thiel, Zuckerberg, and all the other young, beautiful guys who put on their Nikes and go for a run and only wear T-shirts and have bad attitudes, they are the mythology. And you, look at you. You're just a brilliant old engineer who worked with people, gathered $20 million together, 145,000 hours invested. Right. Did I mention $20 million invested? Did I mention all your shareholders? Did I mention all the patents you had before Plus you had afterwards? Did I mention million. your copyrights? Did I mention Zuckerberg has nothing? He says he did it in a week during finals with a keg of beer. Okay. That is the stupidest mythology ever. Here's the truth. You're sitting in front of us. I don't know how you don't just explode as you look at the deprecation of what you thought was going to free people, but in fact has bound people to psyops from the CIA, NSA, counterintelligence, FBI, straight from the White House, from the U.S. Digital Service, on down the line. I, I would go out of my mind if I was you. <laughs> Seriously. Well, let's put it this way. I've decided that I'm going to take it one day at a time and that I'm a Christian and I believe that God puts us in circumstances in our life for a reason. And uh, I concluded after we took the case to the Supreme Court and they wouldn't hear it, that uh, there was something extremely wrong with our country. And maybe that was what I was supposed to take a look at is what was going wrong. And so that's, in fact, what we have been doing as a, as a shareholder group ever since, is peeling away the layers of this onion. And as we began to peel it away, I mean, I, I didn't know anything about the deep state back then. But as we peeled away this onion and we got closer and closer to these guys, it's the same people mm -hmm. that uh, are in the news now every day. And uh, it's, they have a heinous strategy and design for America for our Constitution. They don't like the Constitution. They want a crony capitalist the world government that they control, that they're on top of. And unfortunately, I happen to have had the invention that they wanted to pull all this together electronically. And so uh, uh, I don't know where this is going, but I, I think that truth has a way of finding its uh, home uh, in honest people. You just nailed it on the head. It's only a few dozen people. Trump has the power. You've given him the perfect plan. Matter of fact, you've given him three different plans that he can act on. So what we want you to do, 
we want you to push this plan until it happens in any way that you can. We're making a video right now. You can make a meme. One meme won the American Revolution, the meme created by the printer, Benjamin Franklin. It was a snake. It had the 13 pieces. It was cut in 13 pieces with each one of the colonies name on each piece. Join or die, it said. If we simply go with the plan that leader technology has, it would take down the tech lords. It would take down the false stock market. It would take down globalization. It would take down the centralization of all of these monopolies that wish to do one thing, globalize the world, put it in the hands of those same few dozen people. They're getting close. Tell you, tell you what, we'll take getting our shareholders paid. The other stuff, I'll let you handle. I'm going after the big fish. What we want is you are the thing that can break the mold. It's the same people. If they go down for what they did for you, it is a well, domino I effect. Can see that. So thank you for your long suffering and thank you for your shareholders who are uh, going to keep pushing this until it happens. Because I believe exactly. it's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Michael.